This church was built upon evangelism. This is what our founders recognized when the church was on the move, beloved. They realized, amen, for Christ to come today, they got to get the gospel out. But it was not so much of that, beloved. They had a longing desire for home. And they're telling me, beloved, that the Adventist church is losing the characteristics, my brothers and sisters. We're not looking to go home. We are looking to stay here on earth forever. That is the word on the Seventh-day Adventist church. We are losing the mark. We are losing our, ident our, our identity. The second coming of Jesus, Seventh-day Adventist, Advent, the second coming of Jesus Christ. The tellers, beloved, will be coming now like everybody else. We just want to preach the gospel, a gospel of love and just love Jesus and, and he forgive you and, 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 and whatnot. That is fine and it is good and it's well, but there's, a third, there's another gospel to us. There's another side of the coin and it's known the three angels' message. Fear God. The judgment of his hour is come. And when we preach this message, beloved, we recognize, beloved, that God is looking for a certain group of people. And this group of people is those who will be ready to meet him. We saw ourselves, beloved, in the prophetic pages of the scriptures of God, beloved, called out. To fulfill this great commission, the three angels' message, it carried a sense of urgency, beloved. It was compelled, beloved, to do something because they had a desire that needed to be taken care of. And I asked a question, beloved. I asked a question, beloved, this morning. What manner of person are you? What manner of person are you? We did the evaluation. We looked at ourselves. The question I have to ask, beloved, where do you stand? Where do you stand? And I want to read something, beloved, I found very interesting that was shocking to me as we deal with this message, this proclaiming this message, and as we as Christians sit back and think that God is waiting on us to fulfill this mandate. I got news for you, beloved. God may come another way. It's a possibility. He skipped over Israel, did he? Peter, he tells the man to the Gentiles, don't get so big-headed. Just as though I cut them off, he cut them off, he can do the same thing to you. God is not dependent upon us, beloved, to hasten his coming. Ellen White says it's a privilege to be a part of this. But I think that what we're missing, beloved, is a craving. It's a longing for the city that will compel us to do a great work. But we are looking at this thing as though God is counting on me. But God is not counting on us. It's a privilege to be, to be a part of this great movement. Listen to what the servant of the Lord declares in her writings, and I'm getting ready to close. She declares, beloved, God will employ agencies whose origins man will be unable to discern. Angels would do a work which men might have had the blessings or accomplishing the blessings of accomplishing had they not neglect to answer the claims of God. Huh, did you get it? God can use angels. And he can finish his work in three seconds. In three seconds. This gospel will be preached throughout the world. Then the end will come. It will come. If you're not on board, beloved. You will be found wanting, weighed in the balance, and wanting. He is not counting on us, but it's a privilege to be part of this great work. It is a privilege. And one day he can wrap this thing up. And that's the quotation I want to read to you real quick is this one here. None of us can do without the blessings of God. But God can do his work without the aid of man. If he choose, show. Choose, if, he, if he choose. None of us can do without the blessings of God, but God can do his work without the aid of man if he so choose. Testimonies, volume, page five. The, the quotations I read before that is Selected Message, book one, page 118. And Peter, here, I'll get ready to close now. Peter, basically his message to the 
new converts, beloved, is to let them know to remain focused. Keep your eyes on the prize. Jesus is about ready to come. And he was not so much concerned. He was not so much concerned about the, your situation. He was more concerned about your character. His character. Let me read verse 17 in this passage. Because there's still hope for us today, beloved. There's still hope today. There's still hope today. As God still sits on his thrones. As his mercies is still continue to run over, we recognize that there's still hope. Peter, give us some encouraging words, beloved. And these are my words to you as also. Therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with error of the wicked. But grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the hope, beloved. To him be glory in both now and forevermore. Again, he wants the church to remain focused. Don't take your eyes off the pride. When he comes, he's looking for holiness, amen? He's looking for those who recognize and understand that they have been brought, without, they have been brought with the price. God has laid some sacredness on that individual, amen? He is looking, he's reminding individuals, beloved, God is looking for holiness. He's looking for those, beloved, who will love individuals, respect individuals. He's looking for those who will represent a Christ-like character. He's looking for someone, beloved, if someone has aired you, beloved, that you will respond and you will say, Lord, bless him anyhow. God is looking for God, godliness. Peter is reminding individuals, stay focused. Don't stay focused. Don't take your eyes off the coming of the Lord. The fact of the matter is, beloved, it will help us to get ready. It will help us to clean our house up. It will help us, beloved, be ready to meet the Lord. Don't take your eyes off the Lord. Peter is encouraged in saints, beloved. And also, beloved, hasten the coming of the Lord. Hasten is a part of Christian character, amen? And I forgot to tell you this. In Matthew chapter 25, it is very clear. The sheep and the goats, those who are found working, amen, for the master will be the ones who will be classified as the sheep. But those who are not doing anything for the Lord will be classified as the goats. Ellen White makes it very clear that these goats can be looking like religious folks, but they will be placed on the same side of those who did wickedness because they was idle. They was idle. They was not found working for the Lord. Peter says, beloved, to get to the point by which God is able to accept you, you have to be holy. You got to be godly. You got to be looking, and you got to be hastening the coming of the Lord. And I would like about Peter, but let Peter recognize that we all are, you know, we all are growing in this thing. We all are on different levels in this thing. We all got our issues that we are wrestling with. But he gives the secret, beloved, by which we are able to come, become overcomers. Be overcomers, beloved. This is the secret again in verse 18. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen, beloved. All I've come here to tell you today, beloved, Jesus is about ready to come. Yes, we're not ready. We're not where we need to be. But guess what, y'all? We have to continue to grow in the grace of God. That's all Peter is telling him. Remain focused. Continue to grow. Continue to grow in the knowledge of our Lord, Savior, and Jesus Christ. Because when Christ comes, beloved, he is not going to be looking at us. What he's going to be looking for is, our, is his character in us. In us. That is what Christ is looking for. So do not get distracted. Stay focused. Stay fat fast so you won't lose out. That's it, my brothers and sisters. That's it. I want to just give you this words from words of, of um, I don't know what I want to call it, but words of, of heads up, I guess, that in North America, 
uh, just want to, they tell Claire, they, they saying that majority of the churches is dying. They're in three different, they're in three different categories. One, they're dying, uh, they're dead, or they're decaying. Three in North America. They said at least 90 to 95% percent of the churches in North America falls in one of those three. And having the churches that is not excluded. But I want to just talk, 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 talk about the church. I want to bring it home personally, beloved. And they say that the reason why the church are dying, dead, or decaying is because they took their eyes off the mission. Jesus is about ready to come, and he's looking for a church that is ready to meet him. 